Good morning, Get Well. Thank you for joining us on this final Sunday of 2020. Even when we can't be together physically, we can continue to connect with each other through technology, and we are grateful for that so we can connect and worship together today. We're continuing in our series on truth and tradition. We've been looking at some of the traditional songs that we sing at this Christmas time of year, realizing that these songs resonate with us and speak truth into us in ways that we don't always fully comprehend. So far this month, we've talked about joy. We've talked about peace. Today, we're going to explore the hope that Jesus gives. In 1849, the Boston Christian Register published a poem, a work by a man named Edmund Hamilton Sears. He wrote the words to what have become known to us as the familiar Christmas hymn, It Came Upon Midnight Clear. He wrote the words in a difficult time in our nation's history on the brink of civil war, in the midst of tension, in the midst of difficulty, in the midst of strife. It was in a season of fear. It was in a season where people didn't know where they could turn to hope. And Sears wrote these words encouraging, employing the nation to find hope in the words that we've been looking at again and again through the month of December. The words that the angels brought to the shepherds in Luke chapter 2 that a Savior has been born. Listen to some of the words that Sears wrote in that poem to Uh, the people of our nation in 1849, employing them to find hope. Verse 1, this is what he wrote. It came upon a midnight clear, that glorious song of old, from angels bending near the earth to touch their harps of gold. Peace on earth, goodwill to men from heaven's all-gracious King. The world in solemn stillness lay to hear the angels sing. Still though the cloven skies, they come with peaceful wings unfurled, and still their heavenly music floats all, o'er all the weary world. Above its sad and lowly plains, they bend on hovering wing, and ever o'er its babel sounds, the blessed angels sing. Sears wrote these words, hearkening back to the words of the angels to bring good news that Jesus, our Savior, the Lord, has been born. There on a midnight clear, with no one expecting or looking for God to break in, God did something new. One of the verses that we don't often sing uh, is the original verse 3. I want us to look at that especially thinking about the context of 2020 and all that we've been through, uh, what we can find here. So let's take a look. The original verse 3. But with the woes of sin and strife, the world has suffered long. Beneath the angel's strain have rolled 2,000 years of wrong. And man at war with man hears not the love song which they bring. Oh, hush the noise, ye men of strife, and hear the angels sing. Think about that last line. Oh, hush, ye men of strife. Hush out the noise of the world. Let me ask you this question. What would it look like for us as we exit 2020 and look ahead to 2021 to hush all the noise The noise in our own mind and heart, the noise around us of fighting, of difficulty, of sickness, of loss, of grief. For just a moment to hush the noise, not to ignore it, not to act like it's not there, not so that we can run away from it, but to hear the good news of the angels that Jesus has been born. Let's look one more time of this sure and certain hope that we have, this message that the angels bring. Luke chapter 2, we'll start in verse 11. Today, in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. 
Suddenly a great company of heavenly hosts appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven and on earth, peace to those on whom his favor rests. A Savior has been born. God has come to us, Emmanuel, God with us, sending his son to take on flesh, to do for us what we could not do. He didn't wait for us to figure it out. He comes to us and he comes to save. Like we talked about last week, he comes to bring peace, to make all things right and good and whole and complete. So here's where we wrestle with it. Why do we miss this message of hope. Sometimes we miss it in the good times. Everything is going right. Everything is good. Everything is as we would have it to be. And in those moments, don't we tend to take credit for all the things that are working out and we forget about the work, the grace, the love, the goodness of God. Sometimes we miss it in the bad times, in the difficult times where we're struggling. And all we can see there in front of us is, is the hard pain, difficulty, struggle that we're walking through. And because that's all we can see, we forget about the greatness of God and the power of God and the mercy of God. And we doubt and we question, could God ever get me through this? Is God really here? Is God really listening? In either circumstance, we have a tendency to lose sight of hope. Hope is the ability to look ahead with faith to see the goodness of God. To look ahead at what we cannot see, trusting, not in our own ability, not in the circumstances around us, not in what somebody else may do or not do, but in the goodness of God ahead and the future to come. This kind of seeing, trusting, and hope requires us a certain kind of mindset. It's an understanding, if you're taking notes this morning, you might want to write this down. It's understanding that this kind of hope is not determined by what I'm going through, but it is decided by what I'm going to. So let me ask you, in Jesus, by what he's done for us, what are we going to? We can look around us and see all the stuff that we're going through. The sickness, the challenges, the brokenness, the division. We can see all of that stuff so clearly, but can we see what we're going to? Because in Jesus, we are always going to healing and to redemption. Jesus is bringing healing to our brokenness, the brokenness inside of us, that wrestling, that struggle inside where I can't do what I want to do. I can't be who I want to be. I can't seem to keep my eyes focused on Jesus. I'm continuing to be pulled by the world around me. He heals the broken relationships I have with others where I let others down and hurt them and they hurt me and we wrestle and struggle to forgive. And Jesus comes to restore and heal those places. Jesus comes to bring me purpose that my life can really matter, not because I'm so smart or so good or so capable or have my plans worked out, but because Jesus is redeeming my life, calling me to be a part of what he's doing, and he is redeeming everything that I pursue in life. And ultimately, Jesus is redeeming my relationship with God, our Father, that he's connecting us. He's the bridge, freeing me from sin and death and connecting me with the eternal God who loves me and made me. In Jesus, we are always going to healing and redemption. So here's what I want to lift up as we close out 2020. I want us to really focus in on and celebrate the things that God is calling us, Getwell Church. What is he calling us to move to in 2021? I'm convinced that one of the things that we are going to is we're going to continue to care for each other. That we're going to reach out, we're going to call, we're going to text, we're going to send a note, we're going to stop by, we're going to say, how's life? How are you doing? I, I can see that you're struggling. I can see that you're going through a difficult moment and I want to support you. I want to encourage you. Or I can see that you have a need and, and I can meet that need and, and I'm committed to walk with you. Or maybe it's in the celebrations and the joys and the good moments of life that I want to celebrate with you and I want to be a friend and I want to lock arms with you and we are committed, get well, to care 
for each other. Another thing that I know that we're going to in 2021 is we're going to continue to worship and praise Jesus. We're going to celebrate who Jesus is. We're going to worship. We're going to sing songs about the glory of our God and what Jesus has come to do. We're going to teach the gospel. We're not going to just focus on, well, I want to live a better life and how do I have self-help methods and how do I fix that or fix that? No, we're going to focus on what Jesus has come to do. We're going to praise him. We're going to honor him. We're going to tell others about him. We're going to serve him. We're going to be faithful in our giving. We're going to be faithful in inviting God to speak into me of what are you calling me to do with my life, my time, my resources. And we're not just going to do this on Sunday. We're going to do it every day of the week. Waking up in the morning, asking God the question, how can I worship you with my life today? Another thing that I'm convinced that we are going to in 2021 is we're going to serve our community. We're going to look around us and, and ask the question, what are the needs around me? What are the things that I can do? What are the ways that I can show the love of God to somebody else? Knowing I may not be able to do for everybody, but I can do for somebody and I can do for somebody what God is inviting me to do, and that's share God's love in a tangible way. That I will meet the needs that I can when I can. That because we're going to come together with that commitment, DeSoto County is going to be better off because we follow Christ in a way that they can see it and hear it and touch it. We're going to reach out saying, God is here. God is at work. Finally, I know that we're committed, that we're going to making prayer the very focus and foundation of everything we do together. That we're going to engage God, not just in a way where we maybe say a blessing at the table or we pray as we go to bed at night, but real, deep, serious, desperate prayer where we're listening to the voice of God saying, God, I want to know your voice. I want to hear you when you speak. I want to be able to discern it from all other voices and I'm pursuing you and I will go to God in silence. A desperate prayer where we go to God and we praise him and we confess our brokenness and our sin and invite him to work in us, but also we lift up the things that we need. How often in our prayer time do we just leave things general? God bless me. God take care of me. God be with me. How do we know if God ever answers those prayers? My encouragement for all of us is that we would be specific. God, here is where I need you to move because I know you hear and I know you move. And the answer might be yes, it might be no, it might be wait, but I know that you're in control. And God, I need you to move in my life for my good and your glory. Ultimately, here's what I want to invite every single one of us to think about as we move into 2021. As we hold on to the hope that we have in Jesus, how do we share it with the people around us? That sure and certain hope that's not determined by what I'm going through, but it's determined by what I'm going to. That ability to see ahead to what God is doing, what God is bringing, and I see it in faith. How do I share that kind of hope with others? I want to invite you to think about the intersection of three places in your life. Here's the first is what breaks your heart? What makes your heart come alive? What makes your heart beat fast? What is the passion of your life that's worth getting up in the morning? What is it that you see that should not be that way in the world? What is it you see in the world that I was meant to be a part of that? What breaks your heart? The second thing is what do I have to work with? God, what are the resources you've given me? God, what are the relationships that I have? What is the life experience, the lessons I've learned? Who are the people around me? God, what have you placed in my hands, in my life, that I can use to serve you and make much of Jesus and share his hope with others? And then finally, it's what are the needs around me? What are the people needing in my life, who are the broken? Who are the hurting? Who are the searching? Who are the desperate? And asking the question, where do these things intersect? What breaks my heart? 
What do I have to work with? What are the needs around us? If I can find that place of intersection and go there with the message of God's love and his peace and his joy and his hope, then perhaps I'm truly joining with God and his kingdom work. I know 2020 has been difficult. There's been a lot of loss. There's been a lot of struggle. There's been a lot of pain, a lot of hurt, a lot of grief. And we need to let that be what it is. And we need to to struggle with it. And we need to, to walk through it. But never to be stuck in it. That even in the loss and in the grief and in the difficulty and the what ifs and the what could have beens, even in the midst of all that, we look ahead with faith to the goodness of God. Yeah, we know the circumstances we're going through, but we can see what we're going to. Will we commit together for 2021, get well, to bring that hope of Jesus to the world? Why? Because God came to earth. Because God came to us. Because God came to do what we couldn't do. God came to set us free. God came ultimately to give us a hope through Jesus, Lord of Lords, King of Kings. Just as we sang earlier today, the line of that familiar hymn, peace on earth, good will to men from heaven's all gracious King. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, thank you for your love and your mercy, your goodness. God, thank you for the hope that we have in Jesus. God, we know that our circumstances we're going through are tough, God, and even more difficult for some of the people around us. So help us by faith, keep our eyes focused on what we're going to, the healing and redemption found in Jesus. Help us to commit to sharing that with the people around us. Help us to commit to continue to worship you and trust you. Help us to commit to be a light in this dark world that we're gonna take love to the people around us. God, help us to commit to keep seeking you and listening to you in prayer. And God, we beg you to move, bring revival to our nation bring revival to our region and our state and our county. Lord, bring revival in us. Start with me, Lord. Bring a change in me. God, thank you, God, that you are not finished with us yet, but you are still at work and you're going to bring to completion what you've begun in us. Lord, we turn our hearts to you. Speak to us. God, move us to confession. Move us to repentance. Move us to faith. Lord, wherever we are in life, for our good, but also for your glory, that we can make much of your son, Jesus, our Savior, our Lord, our King. And it's in his name we pray and in the power of your Holy Spirit. Amen.